we asked Steve Hackett if he still has that electric sitar he used on I Know What I Like from Genesis. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Under a Mediterranean Sky is a new album from Steve Hackett. I love it. He did it during lockdown. The links are in the description of this video where you can pick it up. You still own the electric guitar from I Know What I Like? The electric sitar. Uh, yeah. The sitar. No, that one, actually, they told me it was stolen, but then I found out later that it wasn't. It was just the line that I was sold, and that was my guitar, and it ended up staying with Genesis. Uh, but I did get another one. I've got another one, which is called a Baby Sitar, which is a copy of the Dan Electro one with the little sort of um, lipstick-shaped pickup. So I've got that, but I've also worked with Real Sitar with a... With a um, a lady virtuoso called Shima Mukherjee, whose family taught Ravi Shankar, amongst other people, and she was on my last rock album, At the Edge of Light, and plays like an absolute demon, does it in one go, and you cannot figure out how she does it, because it's not just the lead lines, but she's hitting sympathetic strings. It's like, it, it's like someone psychically breathing, and like, how does the sex play, play a continuous note, and I, I've seen that, it, that it's possible. Rob Townsend does that. And I, can't, I couldn't figure out how she was able to play these these things. And, and in, in this sort of circular motion of every time there's a gap, every time there's a gap in what she's playing, the lead line, she's hitting the sympathetic strings. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing thing. And terrifying to watch. And really heavy gauge strings as well. I don't know. She must have hands like meat cleavers. I don't know how, how that works. How does a girl get to do that? By the way, what was your relationship with uh, with Tony like? Someone had asked that because when I talked to David Henschel, uh, David had said that well, at, at least with his when he was uh, producing the band, uh, that he says yes. uh, to him it was Peter's band and and Tony's band. He says, and everyone added flavor to that. But would you agree with that? How, what was your relationship like with Tony? Well, I think, you know, to address your, the first thing, um, you have to remember I wasn't a founder member of, of Genesis. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the keys to the songwriting cabinet could often be guarded very closely. So, you know, you had to um, you had to do it with the idea of composition by committee. And um, it meant that everyone was auditioning their ideas. But I think that Pete obviously took a very strong role in it. I think that um, initially um, it was Anthony Phillips, my predecessor, who was the strongest character in the band. Um, and then I think through his association with Mike Rutherford, they became a team. But I, I know that, you know, Ant was, was a very strong keyboard player. And I, I don't believe that Tony was prepared to um, share any keyboard parts with, with anyone else. Um, so, um, you know, there, there's this thing where obviously... Uh, Pete and um, Tony would also, you know, try and lead it. Um, occasionally, obviously, they would relinqu relinquish control, and that's where the other guys came in, myself and Phil. Um, but, you know, founder members hold more sway than, than the new boys. Um, all I can say is that sometimes what you have to do is to bring out the best in others, and I felt that that was my role with, um, with Tony. I yeah. realized he was immensely gifted, um, harmonically more, more sophisticated than anybody else in the band. Uh, um, and um, I think the rest of us, you know, worked around that uh, uh, to some degree. And I tried to have an overview of the band and I tried to think think like a producer or, or think like, like um, a publicist. Um, various other roles, of, of, of things you, that you could do. Try and notice the things that other people don't notice try and be there for the cut for instance you know try and insist that we get you know the stage show uh, uh, the presentation right you know to get the mellotron get the the synth get the lights all of that and uh, uh, yeah mm -hmm. I, I would have no influence on what pete might decide to wear on, on, a, on a on a given e evening whether it was going to be a fox's head or, or his wife's dress or bat wings or <laughs> or a flower that was all his department but i could say you know, in order to be able to do something like Sup is Ready, I think I'm largely responsible for sticking together by saying I think that we, should, we could do a really long tune. I think we can make this work. Yeah. Um, uh, but I said, I, look, I'm not really prepared to do this live unless we have all the bells and whistles. There's a lot of 
resistance at first. And I said, no, sorry, we have to have the light show. We have to have the sound effects. We have to have the kids singing. We have to have the train noises or else we are not going to retain uh, the audience's attention. Um, so both Pete and I put our foot down. Sometimes you have to be very unpopular to be popular, but I believe it was the right move, uh, right move and, 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 and the right thing to dig my heels in. Sometimes you have to threaten. You know, um, it's just the way it is. Most of the time I could be quite passive if, if I felt someone else was coming up with a better idea. But other times I thought, no, sorry, this isn't a get even moment. It's just yeah. a case of I know that this has got to be right. We've got to go all out. If, if every department pulls out all the stops, we can we can turn, you know, a, a song like uh, Supper's Ready into, into a triumph rather than a, oh, they wandered off to the bar. Under A Mediterranean Sky is a new album from Steve Hackett. You can order it on his website right now. There'll be links in the description of this video. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.